There are many unique utility-based characters in Overwatch that can not only be a nightmare to deal with, but if tapped into, you could start dominating the opposition as well. That being said, in this guide, we're going to be breaking down Junkrat, Symmetra, and Sombra and give you tips and tricks on not only how to pop off with them, but shut them down. Now, I know before we move on, I know that Junkrat, Symmetra, and Sombra guides are really infrequent online, but if you go to GameLeap.com, we have tons of them. Do yourself a favor, go check it out. Now, without further ado, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So the first character on our list is fan favorite Junkrat. He's an aerial denial based character and a shield breaker. Junkrat wants to pressure choke points and put extra pressure into enemy shields and their healers. Here are the big tips that we have here at Game Leap for Junkrat to help you get more impact on average in your games with him. The first one is try and save at least one mine always if possible. While I know you want to up your overall DPS often with Junkrat, the problem is they are on a pretty long cooldown. If you use both your mines and you get pushed up by the enemy, or even if a diver comes after you, you're not going to be able to get out safely. Junkrat's mines double as a form of mobility, so it's extremely important that you're reserved on these abilities. Mine is also one of the best ways to do a one-shot combo against a lot of squishies, so it really is a versatile ability that you should err on the side of using it later rather than earlier. On top of this, if you start on the high ground, you could easily drop down to the low ground and use your mines to get back up to the high ground, changing multiple planes of verticality, which makes it a lot harder for people to commit to you altogether, and Junkrat can be really effective from the high ground, so don't be afraid to actually use this tip often. Now let's talk about the second tip that we have for you on Junkrat, which is Junkrat gets a lot of value on certain maps, and you need to understand what those maps are and why. Maps like Temple of Anubis, first and second defense, Eichenwald, first defense, or on the third point, attack and defense, Hollywood, first defense. A lot of these maps have things in common, choke points, routing points that you can really heavily abuse with Junkrat, and a lot of travel time where you can get free value in. You really need to learn when and where he's good so that you know exactly when he is the best pick, or if you main him, you know when you can really, really abuse him and how. Now let's talk about tip number three. When using your tire, you need to keep in mind what enemies can kill your tire. It's all about LOS or line of sight. Imagine if you're a person that's one HP, what are you normally gonna be doing? Playing around natural cover, trying to really quickly sneak around the map, you aren't gonna be doing things that much differently with tire. Don't fly your tire out in the open like crazy. Really think about routing and how you're gonna get to the enemy. On top of that, if you really think about the enemies that can kill your tire, like what do they have? Do they have things like McCree, Widow, things like Genji or Doom? Depending on what the enemies have, you can change how you move your tire. You can never fly out in the open if they have multiple hit scans, but if they have no form of hit scan, then you could do a much more direct route and you want to try to get them as quickly as possible. The last tip we're going to have for you on the ultimate is don't get too greedy. Far too many junk rats try to go for the five and six man play, but the one and two mans are enough to usually win the team fight. This is extremely important for you to understand when we move on to the fourth tip we have for you on Junkrat is that you can bait divers for your body when you go for the ultimate. When enemies hear the tire, often they're going to be going to try to punish the Junkrat. If a Gendry or Doomfish tries to kill you and your body, using your tire just to kill them and staying alive is usually better than fishing for more, and I would highly suggest it. Now let's talk about the four ways to deal with Junkrat. If you're up against a really annoying Junkrat that keeps farming you, what can you do to deal with him? The first thing is, keep track of his minds and what he has. We talked about how you should save Junkrat's mind if you're playing him, but often Junkrats will waste way too many minds, and if he doesn't have them, realize that that's a time where he's weak and vulnerable and you can potentially make a play on him. Secondly, what you should understand is you should really try to stay pretty far away from Junkrat if you can, unless you're going in for a kill, especially if you're a DPS. Junkrat can burst incredibly easily from close range, and one of his only weaknesses, which is his projectile speed, which is extremely slow, you can't dodge it when you're point blank. So really keep that in mind. A lot of times Junkrats will try to turn the tables on you if you're a Tracer, Genji, Doomfist, or whatever, if you try to close in for the kill when he still has some resources. Now let's talk about tip number three to deal with Junkrat, is really punish him for flying in arcs. This is exceptionally true for a lot of low rank Junkrats, that what they will do is they'll use their minds and they have too much air time. They'll be flying through the air in natural arcs, and there's a lot of characters that can punish this. Characters like Hanzo, characters like Widow, McCree, there's tons of characters that can really punish him for flying in arcs, and this is when he's really most vulnerable. And if you're Junkrat, as a bonus tip, try to not do this and really think about the time you're going to be spending in the air in a fixed pattern. Now, as a fourth and final tip we have for you when dealing with Junkrat is really keep in mind your routing. A lot of times there are certain points of the map where you simply should not go up against a Junkrat. Think about the Temple of Anubis example. Routing through the left side is going to be playing right into Junkrat's strengths. Perhaps going through the middle or up to the top right can be far better, or trying to find a different proactive plan altogether like diving onto the enemy. 
Realizing what is Junkrat's strengths is really important when playing against Junkrat, because if you play right into his strengths, you're going to give him essentially free value, which can snowball over time into multiple team fights lost as Junkrat starts racking up ultimates. Now, moving along to the next character on our list, we have Symmetra. Now, Symmetra has a lot of interesting utility with both her teleporter and her turrets. Also, she does quite a bit of damage when charged up against barriers, so she's pretty good at shield breaking as long as she's a frontline brawler, and this extra utility can get a lot of use if you know exactly how to use it. Let's jump into some tips and tricks so that you have more impact with her overall in your average game. So, the first thing that I would suggest with you to do is find a duo that is a shield tank. So, this is one of the most important things if you want to play Symmetra. Playing with someone that can not only set up your teleports, but is someone that can play with you on the front line as you build your charge is extremely important. The best suggestion I would have would be a Reinhardt, but Sigma could work as well if that's something you would want to. And I think Arisa is probably the worst one because she doesn't necessarily play into that frontline brawl that you want to be as Symmetra. Being able to have the comms and the synergy to set up things like, hey, Hold up shield Ryan while I teleport the whole team to point. That's something that's incredibly important. And if you're playing an aggressive base Symmetra, I would definitely suggest you do it with a Reinhardt or a Sigma. Now let's talk about the next tip that we have for you on the list, which is don't be afraid to mix up the teleporter on attack. You need to analyze the area first before you teleport. And sometimes teleporting right to point can mess you up. If the enemies expect it and you try to teleport to point and the teleport itself gets messed up due to a boop, due to a nade, due to enemies waiting for you on the other side of the teleporter, you could easily get punished and essentially have two 3v6 fights overall which could be a disaster if your teleporter doesn't teleport your whole team it could turn into a disaster where you essentially give the enemy team a free team fight really keep this in mind and if they're all playing the point or they're playing in certain areas realize that hey i can teleport us to the top left or hey i can teleport us to the top right or around the flank or anything like that you don't have to always just play it one dimensionally now moving on to the next tip that we have for you on the list is when you have your ultimate photon barrier use it instantly when you're pushing onto a point don't wait i see symmetras wait far too often and the thing about it is you allow the enemy to create plays or opportunity onto your team if you push onto a point like a 2 cp you put pressure on the enemy to contest you right away because you're going to get ticks right and photon barrier lasts for so long if you create that pressure you put the barrier right up you go onto point the thing is, Barrier will block so many potential plays with the enemy. Things like potentially High Noon, on a nades, Line of Sight, Tactical Visor, there's a list of things that Barrier can completely shut down and stop. But if you wait too long, it puts less pressure on the enemy team to contest you. It makes it so your photo pair is probably going to get less value, and it can allow one of your teammates to get picked off, which means your Barrier might not even turn into a teamfight win, when in my opinion, it's one of the most singularly impactful and powerful ultimates in the entire game. Now let's talk about the last and final tip that we have for you on Symmetra before we get to how to deal with her is learn how to juggle peak corners with your orbs. You can really easily charge up your orbs and juggle peak corners and choke points. You can pretty much spam essentially to get free kills. On top of that, be sure to charge your beam for free on left behind things like Winston barriers or Rissa shields because essentially it doesn't mess with your ammo at all and it can build you charge before you walk into the next fight. Now let's head over to some big tips that will help you deal with Symmetra. The first thing that you need to understand is scouting early and calling a sim is extremely important for potential disruption play. If you are holding something, let's say you're holding Hanamura, which is a very popular sim spot and you're on defense first point. If you're a mobility based character, someone like Tracer, someone like Genji, you should push up and gather some information ahead of time. If you can relay to your team that they have a sim, you can cut off accesses of play for the enemy. Don't get caught off guard for no reason. Figure out that information so you can set up a play so you don't get blindsided. Now moving on to tip number two to deal with Symmetra, don't all rush to point if they all teleport to point. It is okay to give up some amount of ticks if the enemy caught you by surprise. They've earned those ticks because they caught you by surprise. But here's the problem. If you all rush to point, panic rush to point to contest it, which happens all the time, if you panic rush to point, you're going to end up funneling in one at a time and essentially staggering onto that point, which could allow you to get completely demolished when you're essentially taking 2v6s, 3v6s, and the enemy is just going to be able to win the point for free and you and your team are going to generate very little ult charge and if the Symmetra built her barrier you're just going to get annihilated the next point with the photon barrier so you really need to get this right it's okay to give up two ticks and even if you fight them for the last tick as a full team fight it's always better because if you win you actually hold and you're not going to get blindsided again and if you lose at least you built up precious ult charge because you had a real team fight and it's going to give you a lot better chance to actually combat them on the second point now moving on to the next 
tip that we have for you on the list is break teleporters if you see it don't let a teleporter stay up for very long if you start to win a fight or if you want to fight it has huge stall potential i was playing a point on lijing tower as tracer and i had 16 kills i was 16 and 0 before we even capped the first point. Do you know why? Because enemies were funneling constantly onto the point and I was killing and killing and killing and killing, but it didn't matter how many I killed because the enemy kept on playing stuff like Wrecking Ball and characters that had a lot of sustain like Mei, and we could never actually kill them all off. And by the time we capped, sure, I had all these kills, but I already used several Pulse Bombs, I think. I think by that point, I already used two Pulse Bombs, but what would have been better for me is the second we had advantage, I should have routed over to the TP and destroyed it. This would have been far better to potentially prevent this point from dragging on so long because you should not be getting that many kills without capping a point and it was a big mistake on my part now let's talk about the last tip that we have for you it is very important for you to track an enemy sims ult if she has it you need to realize that sometimes you should be swapping entire heroes so that you can have value against it let me give you this example you're playing something like soldier 76 if you're on the high ground and they push point with a sem wall photon barrier what are you gonna do you're gonna be essentially useless for the duration of the whole photon barrier which means you're just gonna do nothing there's a lot of different characters you could play that will get value even through a photon barrier and it might be better for you to even swap to them even if you're close to ultimate the best character that I would suggest you swap to if you're a DPS player is someone like Doom. Doom's incredibly good against Photon Bear. There's supports that are good against Photon Bear. Things like Brig is very good comparatively to something like Ana. There is a list of a ton of characters that are better against Photon Bear, and you really need to be swapping it up if the enemy has Photon Bear. So it's very important that you track this ultimate. Now moving on to the last, but certainly not least, character on our list, we have Sombra. Sombra is a flanker, a harasser, and a playmaker all wrapped in one. She's incredibly difficult to play, especially with the ranked environment. So let's give you some tips and tricks on how to get more impact on average with her in your games. The first tip that we have for you is that you need to have your translocator in a place that doesn't completely remove you from every fight. This is the biggest mistake that most Sombras have, is they'll put their translocator essentially 30 seconds or more away from the fight, near a mega or something like that. You cannot be gone for this long at a time. Sombra is all about uptime. You need to be contributing to the fight, you need to be building your ultimate. A lot of times, as long as you're going to be in safe positionings that you can get healed from, don't put your translocator way too far away and really realize that you need to be contributing to the fight and not leaving your team 5v6 all the time. The second tip that we have for you, which is another big mistake that a lot of Sombras do, is they hack Megas always. A lot of times, hacking Megas is a waste of time and it could cost you precious ultimate. You'll see many Sombras start the round near a Mega and hack it and then go out to make a play. When if you were starting near the enemy, you could potentially have gotten a hack of already and build all the way up to 20% or more of your ultimate charge then when you translocate you could get healed up and start continuously generating that ultimate it's all about uptime and how long it's taking you to build up that ultimate which is definitely one of the most powerful things that you could be doing in the entire game Hacking Megas can definitely be useful, but realize that is a backseat to hacking enemies, making plays, and building ultimates. So do not make this the center point of every single game, and do not start games off instantly hacking Megas all the time. Now moving on to the third tip that we have for you on Sombra, it's some targets are not worth hacking, and you should just try to kill them, and some targets are best for trying to make hack plays, or some are best for just trying to generate ult charge. Let me give this example. Hacking a Zen does not that much. He could still pressure you and deal damage to you. It's far better for you to simply just start doing damage to him from the high ground, drop down, try to confirm the kill, and then translocate away. Hacking him gives him a heads up without really adding anything to you potentially killing him. Now, some targets are really good to hack for potential plays that can be made. Something like hacking a Doomfister coming in or things like that. Those are really value hacks trying to make a play on them. And some hacks are really good for generating ult charge. Think about hacking something like a D.Va from the high ground. Not only can she not cancel your hacks anymore, she's a really easy target for you to generate tons of ult charge. Hacking a D.Va can bring you anywhere from 15 to 25% ult charge because essentially she can't do anything about it and she's a huge hitbox for you to farm. Now moving on to tip number four we have for you, you need to start tracking enemy ultimates and it will let you disrupt plays, such as Nano Blade with a well-timed hack. Sombra is one of the most important ult tracking heroes. Being able to know exactly what enemies have ultimate can set up scenarios where you essentially perma hack them or hack them continuously every single team fight and pressure them so they never quite get off their ultimate combo or individual ultimate. Doing things like continuously hacking a Zara that has grab to where she never can get in position to grab and if she wants to she's going to have to use multiple abilities just to peel you off of her. This is an extremely powerful aspect to Sombra and it really makes Sombra a big time game sense oriented hero and 
and she can reward you for tracking enemies ultimates perfectly now moving on to the last and final tip we have for you on sombra it's don't get greedy with emp EMP is, yes, one of the best abilities or ultimates in the entire game, but a lot of times it doesn't take an EMP of five in order to actually win a team fight. Sometimes you could even get a giant EMP, and if your team's not there to follow it up, it doesn't matter, and you're going to get very little value. Hacking two or three people that are near your team and allowing you and your team to easily focus them down is going to be worth a whole team fight altogether. And at the end of the day, a team fight one is a team fight one regardless how it gets done. It doesn't have to be a fat six man ultimate. It could be a three man ultimate that gets you three kills. That's good enough. Now moving on to the next section, we're going to talk about ways that you can counter Sombras in your game. Sombras can be very annoying to deal with, so let's give you some tips and tricks to shut her down. The first thing is, if you have a spray weapon, especially one that doesn't take ammo, something like Diva's Fire, always spy check spy check every corner spy check the high ground spy check around in your downtime look for sombra if she gets scouted she's gonna have to translocate and her cycle gets completely reset on top of that really keep in mind that if you have a hit scan weapon it's your job to potentially stop hacks it's gonna be really difficult for you to do so but if you're quick enough and you can cancel some hacks on sombra that can be the difference between getting off ultimates and winning a team fight or losing it all together now moving on to the next tip that we have for you against the sombra is do not let yourself personally get farmed by sombra it it is your responsibility to prevent this if all possible, but if you are getting farmed, you need to be calling it so that your allies know. A lot of times allies will completely miss guess when a Sombra has EMP because one of their allies is getting farmed. If you're a diva and you know that the Sombra is farming you again and again, one, understand that there's ways you could stop that, and two, understand that if you can't stop it, you really need to relay that to your team. They need to know when an EMP is coming. Now moving on to the third tip that we have for you when up against Sombra is when a Sombra has EMP, you really need to spread out and try to secure kills and use ultimates aggressively if possible. Putting on early pressure makes it so the Sombra doesn't have a perfect EMP, but if you're just waiting around and you know she has EMP, you're doing nothing proactive, you let the Sombra essentially set up the perfect EMP at the right time, and this is the way that you ensure a team fight loss. Now moving on to the last tip that we have for you against the Sombra is realize that some fights should be something called dry pushing. If Sombra's EMP, she can use it to win an entire fight. While you definitely need to push forward with actual vigor, with the intent to actually win a fight, you don't necessarily need to invest ultimates. The more pressure you put in the enemy and the more picks or pressure you potentially get on them, the more pressure you could put on the Sombra to use her EMP, but you don't want to be wasting three, four, five ultimates in a fight where you know that the Sombra has that EMP in her back pocket to essentially win it out and cancel all your ultimates where they get very little value. Now, all this being said, if you want to master Sombra, Symmetra, or Junkrat, do yourself a favor and go check out GameLeap.com. We have in-depth VOD reviews about each and every one of these characters, including tips and tricks, to really level up your game so that you can become the best player you could possibly be on these heroes, step-by-step step closer to Grandmaster. That being said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below, and if there's any video ideas that you want to see, I'll jump right on it, but you gotta let me know. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills. And until next time, 